The Gulf of Mexico is known by many names. America's sea is one, and the American Mediterranean is another. To some, the Gulf of Mexico is the energy coast. It's also known as the Forgotten Coast. It is a sea of contrasts where a healthy environment and a healthy economy simultaneously coexist and contend with one another. There is a lot that happens in the Gulf of Mexico that, quite frankly, we sometimes take for granted. There's a tremendous amount of economic productivity. For example, the four major sectors in the Gulf of Mexico being oil, tourism, shipping, and fisheries, if they were their own country, it'd be $234 billion a year and it'd rank 29th out of 230 countries around the world. That's a very powerful, very strong incentive to do right by our natural resources here. The northern half of the Gulf of Mexico is bounded by the United States, Mexico to the west, and Cuba to the south. It covers 615,000 square miles and ranks as the ninth largest body of water in the world. From the vastness of the open gulf to the shallow flats of the bay system, in these waters, the diversity of life abounds. We just completed an all-species inventory. Last year, published it, Biota of the Gulf of Mexico. So from protozoans to mammals, we got them all counted. 15,419 species. There are lots of species in the Gulf of Mexico that most people don't normally think of, but they're there. Another misconception about the Gulf is its lack of depth. The Gulf of Mexico is commonly thought of as a shallow gulf, but in fact the average depth is more than a mile deep. The deepest part of the Gulf is 2.6 miles deep. Most people aren't aware that we've got lots of coral reefs. People think about the Florida Keys, extensive coral reefs there. As you go into the southern gulf, lots more coral reefs. You only have to go a, a little ways offshore in the northern gulf, and you get the salt diapers. And these are large salt domes, and they're like small mountains under sea, and they come within 50, 60 feet of the surface. And they're the northernmost coral reefs in the Gulf of Mexico grow on top of these salt domes. There's about 26 salt domes in that area that all support coral. Pretty impressive. Another impressive ecosystem is the network of barrier islands that line the northern half of the Gulf. The sequence of a barrier island next to a laguna or bay, next to healthy marshes and wetlands, creates a natural defense to the destructive impact of hurricanes and tropical storms. This mosaic of habitats provides nursery area for a variety of creatures. Some migrate and commute between the bays and the gulf, forming a living link between these habitats. From the oyster reefs that cleanse the bays of the upper coast to meadows of seagrasses along the lower coast, the benefits are real and varied. Seagrasses are beneficial to the ecosystem for many different reasons. They provide ecological services such as helping to prevent erosion. They have a very extensive root structure that holds sediments in place. They also help to absorb excess nutrients that may enter the bay through stormwater runoff. They oxygenate the water column. So as they take in sunlight, they photosynthesize and release oxygen, which
which provides oxygen in the water for fish. Two places on the Gulf Coast are so special they are designated as national seashores. Off Mississippi and Florida is a network of islands known as the Gulf Islands National Seashore. In Texas, one of our special treasures is Padre Island. Padre Island National Seashore is very important because it preserves this longest stretch of undeveloped Bear Island Beach in the United States. It just goes for miles and miles. It's important for recreational values as also for values with wildlife. And in particular, it's the most important Kemp's Ridley nesting beach in the United States. Kemp's Ridley is the most endangered sea turtle species in the world. For over 30 years, we've been working to try to increase the numbers nesting at Padre Island National Seashore to provide a safeguard against its extinction in case some sort of political or environmental catastrophe was to occur at the main nesting area in Mexico. Our use of the Gulf of Mexico many times is at odds with the ecosystem. Sometimes there is a precarious balance between ecology and the economy. This conflict became tragically vivid on April 20, 2010, with the explosion on the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig. It claimed 11 lives and spilled an estimated 4 million barrels of oil into the Gulf before the well was capped. But is this crisis over? It's not in the eyes of scientists and anyone who understands the Gulf. It's just starting. This is just the beginning uh, of looking at what those impacts were, because we really don't know. Our knowledge has been so poor, and this event is so huge. We've never seen anything like this on this scale. So trying to understand the impact of it will take us many years of study and investigation. I've been asked this question many times, should we just stop drilling for oil in the Gulf of Mexico? And my response has always been this, that what we're entitled to is our own opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. And the fact is that if we're interested in the energy security of this country, as much as we're trying to get to renewable energy sources, which we should all be doing, the best scenario of moving forward there still means that we're going to be dependent on oil and gas for our lifetime. And so what we have to do is realize that we're going to have to have oil and gas. And unless we want to buy it from foreign countries, the one place where the oil and gas is located in the Gulf of Mexico, right beneath our feet, uh, and we're going to have to continue to drill. The challenge is, can we do that while we protect the environment? That's the challenge. It has raised awareness on how we balance the myriad of uses that are found in the Gulf of Mexico. This is a water body that belongs to us all, and we have all have an opportunity to play a role in its stewardship and its future. And if we don't capitalize on that, that will be our biggest failure.